Good evening, everyone. I'm so uh, glad to be here today. And I thank you all for uh, listening and looking at one. And uh, we're going to continue to pray for one another, uh, including ourselves. You know, and you do the same. You know, be prayerful. Uh, will everyone please bow your head in prayer? Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Lord, I, I come to you at this time because you're the only one. Only one we really uh, can go to. And I, I, I thank you for being there uh, for us. And I know you hear us. I know you can see in our heart. I know you know what's in our heart. Heavenly Father, I know you know what we've been doing and saying uh, through the week and even through this day. So, Lord, I, I thank you for your Holy Spirit for um, guiding us and directing us. But, dear Heavenly Father, I also uh, thank you for your grace and mercy. Because you have, you're full of grace and mercy and uh, forgiveness for us because we have not all done the things you would have us to say and to do. And many times our thoughts are not right, Heavenly Father, but your Holy Spirit is here showing us all the time the way we should be thinking and the things we should be saying and doing. So, Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit for, uh, for being so attentive toward us when we're not a tentative and listening uh, mm -hmm. to him, Father, and we thank you for your mercy and, uh, and your strength to continue to encourage us to do right, mm -hmm. and Lord, um, you, you have mercy and grace on us because even though we have not done wrong, you have not uh, punished us and dealt with us uh, in the way that you could deal with us. It could be a lot harsher uh, and punitive. But you do everything in love toward us because you want us to turn our wicked ways and repent of our sins and come to you. So, Lord, we thank you again for mercy and grace and for you teaching us and leading us in your holy word so we know what to do and what to say. And we thank you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. And what's so in important about that. And I know I do go in the Old Testament. I can't help it because, you know, the Old Testament uh, and the New Testament, you know, the it reveals, the New Testament reveals things that's in the Old Testament, and the Old Testament reveals what's in the New Testament. They, they hand in hand because in the Old Testament you hear uh, so much about our almighty God. Uh, uh, as it says in uh, Deuteronomy, uh, the eighth chapter, uh, the fifth verse, chapter eight and the fifth verse, talking about God. And as we know, Jesus is the Son of God. And as it says in John, the 13th chapter, no, actually the 14th chapter, sixth verse, the only way to get to God is through through Jesus Christ. So um, Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter, the fifth verse says, therefore know in your heart, be fully cognizant that the Lord your God disciplines and instructs you just as a man disciplines and instructs his son. And the sixth says, therefore you shall keep the commandment of the Lord your God to walk that is, to live each and every day in his ways and fear and worship him with all feel reverence, profound respect. And that's what it says even in Proverbs the 8, chapter the 13 uh, verse. And it's, uh, if you go up to the 8 verse, when it's saying cognizant, it wants us to be aware of it in our mind. Be aware of him in our thinking, of everything that we uh, do in our mind. In the third verse, it says, he humbled you. Talking about the uh, <clears throat> Israelite children when they had uh, left Egypt. You know, when he had allowed Moses to go there and talk to Pharaoh and, we, and the people were finally free, you know, let go. It says in the third verse, he humbled you and allowed you to be hungry and fed you with mamma a substance which you did not know, 
nor did your fathers know, so that he might make you understand by personal experience that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. And he wants us to know that, that we're not here on our own. We can't do anything on our own but fail. And he was trying to show them that while they were out there because they didn't have time to prepare for food, you know, when they left because Pharaoh told them to get out. <coughs> so they had to leave in haste. They took a lot of things with them, but it was no preparation of food. So they were out there hungry. So the uh, Lord allowed Mama to come down uh, from heaven to feed them just so they could see that you know that there's a living God and that he that he loved them but uh, they still failed some of them not all they still failed to um, to acknowledge him you know when Moses told them how to gather the mamma just enough for that day someone would greet and gather more and it would turn to worms and things of that sort or some didn't gather enough you know, they were uh, being disobedient and not acknowledging him. And then the fourth verse says, Your clothing did, did not wear out on you, nor did your feet swell these 40 years. In other words, he kept them, you know, in, in good health and everything. And the reason we need to know that the same God is the same God today. He is the one keeping us. But many times, including myself, that's why I had to repent and then just uh, say, Lord, have mercy. Many times we be saying what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's only because of his grace and his love and his uh, kindness toward us that, uh, that we even survive it. It says, um, if we would, uh, I'll take you to that verse. Y'all bear with me. If you go to um, Romans, the second chapter, God is just, he's just good to us. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I say these, these verses because you taught me to, uh, to read the verses, uh, so people won't think it's something coming out of my mouth. Now, I can testify all day long about how good he's been to me. But mm -hmm. go to Romans, the second chapter, and in the fourth verse, um, it says here, if I even read part of the third, it says, but do you think this old man, when you judge and condemn those who practice such things and yet do not do the same things, talking about people judging, mm -hmm. that you will not escape God's judgment and elude his verdict. See, because God, I told you before in other uh, lessons that he know of, was in our heart. And says, or do you have no regard for the wealth of his kindness? See, his kindness is so good to us. And the tolerance and patience in withholding his wrath, just as Little did I know I was going to see that in her when I even prayed that way. He be withholding what he actually could do to us. And it says, are you actually unaware or just ignorant? Ignorant. But it says ignorant. Of the fact that God's kindness leads to repentance, that is to change your inner self, your old way of thinking. It says, seek his purpose for your life. That's what, that's what God was even saying in the Old Testament. He wanted us to seek him and then uh, be wanting to serve and do the things he wants us to do. And it says in 5, but because of your callous stubbornness and unrepentant heart, you are deliberately storing up wrath for yourself. See, it be, they be doing it to themselves. Wrath for yourself on the day of the wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. It says he will pay back to each person according to his deeds, justly as his deeds deserve. It says to those who 
by persistence in doing good, seek unseen, but uh, you may be doing things that's unseen that you're doing good, you know, for someone. But certain mm -hmm. heavenly glory and honorable and immortal immortality, he will get the gift of eternal life. But for those who are selfishly ambitious and self-seeking and disobedient to the truth, but responsive to wickedness, there will be wrath and indignation. And uh, these were the same things going on in the Old Testament. You know, in Deuteronomy 21, he said you can, uh, you have a choice. Mm -hmm. You have a you have a choice. It says there in uh, Deuteronomy the, the twenty eighth chapter, and he's saying the same thing in the New Testament. You know, we have a choice. We have, we a, have choice. a choice. We choose. Who are we choosing? We in the, we choosing Jesus Christ. We better, we better. because in the Old uh, Testament it says. Uh, there's consequences in the 15th there, verse. There is. It says, but in the 15th verse of Deuteronomy 28 chapter it says, but it shall come about if you do not listen to and obey the voice of the Lord, your God, mm -hmm. being careful to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I am commanding you today, then all these curses will come up on you and overtake you. And the main uh, commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy might, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. Uh, you should listen to him too. Listen to him and obey the commandment. It says uh, you will be cursed in the city and cursed in the field. And uh, just letting them know that, you know, your body will be cursed and your offspring will be uh, cursed. Your basket and your kneading bowl will be cursed. That's where you're making food. Then your offspring of your body and the produce of your land and the offspring of your herd and, and the young and your flock will be cursed. You will be cursed when you come in and you will be cursed when you go well. And it says, the, the Lord will send up on you curses, confusion, and rebuking everything that you undertake to do until you are destroyed, perishing quickly because of, the e of your evil deeds, because you have turned away from me. See, God don't want us to turn away from him. He didn't want us to turn away in the Old Testament nor in the New Testament because it says the Lord will make pestilence and plagues cling to you until he has consumed and eliminated you from the land which you are entering to possess. Mm -hmm. Now, as we see, a whole lot of things are going on today. And we don't have to go through that, children. We, we can uh, turn from the ways that you're doing that don't have anything to do with God. Mm -hmm. And you know what they are because he said he would not uh, allow us to be ignorant. You can't claim to be ignorant. It says in uh, Proverbs, the 24th chapter, uh, the 12th verse, it said, if you claim ignorance and say, see, we did not know this. You did not know that you're supposed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy might, with all thy soul. Does he consider it? Who weighs and examines the heart? He does. He weighs and examines our heart and the motives that we have when we do anything. And does he not know it who guards your life and keeps your soul? This is what God does for us. Mm -hmm. And he, he, and will he not repay you and every man according to his works? God is listening to us. But it also says in Psalm 62, uh, the 12th verse, also to you, O Lord, belongs loving kindness and compassion, <coughs> blessing and compassion. For you compensate every man according to the value of his work. See, he be looking at us. He, he, you don't have to go and broadcast what you're doing. 
you know, when you're doing good deeds or doing something for somebody, he rather you do that behind closed doors. Well, he tells you not to do that in Matthew. Well, he does. He said, if you if you giving somebody something and helping them, don't don't tell everybody, because that that's you embarrassing a person for one thing, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't want nobody to know that they down on their luck and may not have enough food in the house or may not can pay their gas bill or electric bill. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and do it. And uh, they may not never be able to compensate you for the money you gave them, but God will. He, he repays us for everything. He's going to give to you all the time. So he wants our hearts to be with him. As it says here uh, back in Romans, the second uh, chapter, that uh, fifth verse, it says, talking about our callous heart. Because of your callous, stubbornness, and unrepentant heart, you are deliberately storing up wrath for yourself. Because of what you're doing, you're storing up punishment for yourself. That's what we be doing when we don't do it, what he tells us to do. Because he's going to compensate us for whatever we're doing, whether it's good or bad or ugly. You, uh, you, you're you going to be compensated for those things. So uh, we might as well just get right with the Lord. And uh, and then it's also talking about in, in the New Testament, if you go to 1 Peter, I don't know what we'd do if we didn't have the scripture. To read, but back in the Old Testament, what was going on? The prophets were uh, giving the word to the people. Well, actually, and the um, Son of God. When, once they came out of uh, captivity in yeah. Babylon, book of Nehemiah, mm -hmm. the scribes were reading to the people. Okay. They wasn't doing it before. Mm -hmm. And so the, the scribes must have been reading. Uh, all day long, mostly. So they they didn't have they wasn't able to have a job or do anything. Just, just that was their well, job. Well, they were part of the Levitical priesthood. Mm -hmm. The and Levites didn't own no land. As as far people as people that worked in the temple mm -hmm. didn't own no land. Okay, it so was their job to minister to the so people. So how was they able to, to eat? And, didn't they have children a, too? Yeah, they had children and all that. Well, how was they able to take care of their the family people and tied. do all of that? They brought tithes to them. They said, um, a tenth of what you had goes to the Levi. Oh. Everybody gave them a tenth. And I, I think it was even uh, talk in the New Testament. Someone, it was a husband and wife, they had promised to um, that they was going to sell some property so they could bring money to the church. Well, yeah, they and, said uh, they sold, uh, they said they they and sold their, their property. Right. And they said they gave everything to the church, but actually they held back on some of it. Right. Here it is, right here in Acts, um, the fifth chapter. When they, because, they, all they had to do was say, all I'm going to do is give you half of it. So it, it, it don't pay to be lying about that. No, you don't. It says now, uh, in the, the fifth chapter, it said, a man named Ananias with his wife, Sapphira. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the, ask the fifth chapter. There's mm -hmm. a short story. Yeah. Sold a piece of property. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they wanted the people to bring the money, you know, their possessions and everything. <coughs> uh, no, they didn't. They didn't want them to bring it. Mm -hmm. They didn't require them to bring No, it. they didn't require them. The it's, people it's, um, start selling their property right. and bringing it in and laying it down at the apostles' feet. Right. That's the way it went. But, of course, it even says here, uh, even prior to that, it said um, there was not a needy person among them. Because mm -hmm. those who were owners of land or houses were selling them and bringing proceeds of the sales and placing the money down at the apostles' feet. Mm -hmm. uh, then it was distributed to each as anyone had need. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it says, now Joseph, a Levite and a native of uh, Cyprus, 
who was a surname Barnum, Bar, Barnabas, the apostle, which translated means son of encouragement, sold a field belonging to him and bought the money and set it at the apostles' feet. You know, that's kind of interesting because he was a Levite. Right. And he should have been working in the temple. Right. But he, got, and he shouldn't have had no land. But he may have some, somebody may have left him some land. We don't know how he got the land, but evidently he had it. That's, that's real interesting. Uh huh. And so um, he sold his, though, and bought it to the apostles. And it says, Now the, a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property. And his wife, full of knowledge and uh, complexity, complexity, he kept back some of the proceeds, bringing only a portion of it, and set it at the apostles' feet. And said, But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan Feel your heart. See, Satan gets in our hearts. And he got in his heart uh, to lie to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and secretly keep back for yourself some of the proceeds from the sale of the land. As long as it remained unsold, did it not remain your own to do with as you please? And after it was sold, was the money not under your Control. Why is it that you have conceived this act of hypocrisy and deceit in your heart? You have not simply lied to the people, but to God. And it says, hearing these words, Ananias fell down suddenly and died. And great fear and awe gripped those who heard it because they knew it was nothing to play with the Holy Spirit. So well, he was actually in the church. Right, he was in the church. Peter knew him by name. Right. And there was thousands of people, mm -hmm. but he knew him by name. Knew him by name. So it sounds like he was active in the church. And uh, he, he was telling you didn't even have to do what you did. No, you didn't, he, have to, you didn't have to lie about it. And then when his wife came, uh, Peter said to her in that ninth verse, how could... You two have agreed uh, together to put the spirit of the Lord to a test. To look, the feet of those who had buried your husband are at the door. And she once, uh, and at once she fell down at his feet and died. And the young men came and carried her out. And said, in great fear and awe, gripped the whole church, all who heard about these things. And at the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders attesting miracles were continually taking place among the people. And by common consent, they all met together at the temple in the uh, covered porch called Solomon's uh, porch. So uh, people were giving and uh, and doing the doing the right thing as they should be doing, but you know it's everybody. It's always going to be someone who's not going to uh, follow what God wants them to do. And then if you go to First uh, Peter, that's a big problem in the church now. It is because people don't know right um, what the Word of God says. Right, and if people say that they're going to tie the one uh, reason do that whatever. they uh, mm -hmm. fell dead because they were marking God. Right. The rest of, you know, the scripture before that, Barnabas mm -hmm. actually did sell his land. Right, he brought did. All, all of it. All of it. But they were holding imitating back. Barnabas, but holding back. Right, holding back. And and uh, that's what I've been getting at going through these lessons about the heart. God knows what's in our heart. He knows the motives of our heart. And he knows when you're doing a good deed, whether it's for the good of him or not. And what we're supposed to be doing is uh, pleasing God. As it says in First Peter. Um, right there. Well, that's what, when well, you're pleasing that's God. What Peter called a, that's what a hypocrite does. Right, and that's why I read that about being a uh, hypocrisy. A lot of people are hypocrites. Right, they are. So what chapter are you on? Uh, the uh, third chapter in First Peter. Okay. Um, it 
it says here, y'all bear with me, in the um, eighth verse, mm -hmm. in the first Peter, the third chapter, it says, Valently, all of you be like minded, united in the spirit, because that's the way God wants us to be, like minded. Because if we have our own mind, we're going to do what uh, Satan wants us to do. Because you know that the, the, what that's getting reborn again in us is our spirit, mm -hmm. the mind, and the body didn't get reborn well, again. You find out, even in the church today, a lot of people don't have spirit awareness. No, they not. They're not aware of spiritual things. They not. And they imitate people they think I mean, there's good spirits, spirits and yeah. there are bad spirits. Right, there's evil spirits. Uh, unclean spirits. Right. Jesus called them. But as it, it says here in the eight verses, it said, Finally, all of you uh, be like-minded, united in the spirit. And it says how this is the way they should be, being sympathetic, mm -hmm. being brotherly and kind-hearted, courteous and compassionate toward mm -hmm. each other. As members of one household and humble in spirit, that's the way we're supposed to be, you know, in the church. And the church, we all well, you part know, of the um, church. I'm gonna talk about that, but you know, a lot of people take that to a, a whole new level, mm -hmm. and they actually be pretending. That's right, they do. That's why I said God can see; <laughs> He knows. And then the ninth verse said, and never return evil for evil. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of that going on today. Or never, insult for right. insult. Right. Insult for insult. Avoid scolding and berating and any kind of abuse. Mm -hmm. But on the uh, contrary, give a blessing. Pray for one another's well-being. Contentment and protection. For you have been called for this pur very purpose. Mm -hmm. That you might inherit a blessing from God and bring brings well-being and happiness and protection. It says, for the one who wants to enjoy life and sees good days, good whether apparent or not, it may not even seem like it's good, you know, but you, we still try to do what God wants us to do. Must keep his tongue free from evil and his lips from speaking gall and treachery and deceit. And sometimes I had to bite my lip myself. That's where that murmuring not, come in at. Right. And I murmured a little yesterday about something while I was at working out, and I repented right away, and I felt bad about it throughout the day, asking God to forgive me because it just irked me. And I and I, I finally, when I asked him to forgive me, I, I asked him to forgive me for... Uh, for not being humble, I asked him to forgive me for for pride, you know, the things which uh, I wouldn't have felt that way if I wasn't, if I would have been more humble. It wouldn't well, have, if you hadn't have been in the Word, you wouldn't even know you were doing it. Right. A lot and of people do it, and they don't know that it's bad. Right, it is bad. It's real bad. I was in the grocery store uh, picking up something. What was that? Picking up something. Mm -hmm. And this lady was in front of me, and she mm -hmm. was just going on and on and mm -hmm. on and on and on and on. And I was mm -hmm. saying, I was, you know, I wish she'd go ahead and just pay for her stuff and go, you right. know. Complain That's all I can do the whole my time. Right. Because when people are around you like that, they make the day well, stir it's, it's up it's you. Them. It does. It, it does. It can really uh, do that You too. see that happening to you? And then 11 said, um, he must turn away from wickedness. It, it, see, it's just right here what you're saying. Mm -hmm. He must turn away from wickedness and do what is right. He must search for peace with God, with self. That's what I was doing. And others. And pursue it eagerly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actively, not merely desiring it. For the eyes of the Lord are <laughs> looking favorably upon the righteous and the upright. And his ears are attentive to their prayer, eager to answer. But the face of the Lord is against those who practice evil. He, mm -hmm. he don't want us doing that. And it, uh, 
There's more in this chapter. It says, now, who is there to hurt you if you become enthusiastic for what is good? But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, though it is not certain that you will, you are still mm -hmm. blessed, happy to be admired and favored by God. Do not be afraid of their intimidating threats, nor be troubled or disturbed by their opposition. But in your hearts, set Christ apart as holy, acknowledging him, giving him first place in our lives as Lord. And that's the way it is in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, God was saying how he wants us to love him with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our, mm -hmm. you know, might. And here it's saying, but in your heart set Christ apart as holy, acknowledging him, giving him first place in our lives as Lord. Always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for hope and confidence and assurance elicited by faith that is within you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. And see to it that your conscience is entirely clear so that every time you are slandered or falsely accused, those who attack or dis disperse your good behavior and Christ will be shamed by their own words. For it's better that you suffer unjustly for doing what is right. If that should be God's will, than to suffer justly for doing wrong. So we don't want to do like the world is doing. We want to uh, do the right thing. And it says here, for indeed Christ died for our sins once for all, the just and the righteous for the unjust and the unrighteous and the innocent for the guilty, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in flesh but made alive in spirit, in which he also went and preached to the spirits now in prison, who once were disobedient. And when the great patience of God was waiting, this is an example here in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, Noah's family, were brought safely through the water corresponding uh, to the rescue through the flood. It says her baptism, which is an expression of the believer's new life in Christ, now saves you, not by removing dirt from the body, but by an appeal to God for a good, clear conscience, demonstrating what you believe to be yours through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, that is, place, the place of honor and authority with all angels and authorities and power made sub, uh, subverent to him. So uh, Jesus is at the right-hand side of the Father. Uh, and he loves us and he, he gave us life uh, for us because of God, because he loved God. And we're, we're supposed to uh, love God, too. And if you go to the 8th chapter of John, starting at the 31st verse, this is Jesus um, talking to the Jews, but when he's talking, he's also telling us. It says, so Jesus saying to the Jews, who had believed him. These are the ones who had believed him. And it should be for us. We believe him, right? Yeah. If you abide in my words continually, obeying my teachings, living in accordance with them, then you are truly my disciples. And that's what we are. We, we're his disciples. We had to give the word. Mm -hmm. That's what we, that's our purpose. And our will is to give the word to the people about Jesus Christ. There's three things that Jesus did. He was teaching, preaching, right. and healing. Right, and we have to do those things. And 
uh, says here, and you will know the truth regarding salvation, and the truth will set you free from penalty of sin. Mm -hmm. And they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and, and have never been enslaved to anyone. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by saying you will be set free? And Jesus answered, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, everyone who practices sin habitually is a slave to sin because it be ruling over us. That's sin, you know, when, well, yeah, when if, you, you're practicing. if you're practicing it. It says, now, the slave does not remain in the household forever. The son of, of the master does not remain forever. So if the son makes you free, then you are unquestionably free. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you plan to kill me. Because my word has no place to grow in you, and it makes no change in your heart. See, we have received Christ in our life. He is in our heart. And we love uh, him, but we love God first. And, uh, and it says, I tell these things that I have seen at my father's side and his very presence so that so you also do the things that you heard from your father. And they answered, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to him, if you are truly mm -hmm. Abraham's children, then do the works of Abraham mm -hmm. and follow his example. But as it is, you want to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. This is not the way Abraham acted. You are doing the works of your own father. And they said to him, we are not illegitimate children. We have one spiritual father, God. And Jesus said to them, if God were your father, but he is not you would love and recognize me, for I came from God out of his very presence, and I arrived here, for I have not even come in on my own initiative as self-appointed, but he is the one who sent me. And it even goes to say, why do you misunderstand what I'm saying? It's because your spiritual ears are deaf and you are unable to hear the truth of my word. And your father, the devil, and it is your will to practice the desires which are characteristics of your father. Mm -hmm. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks about it natural to him, for he is a liar and the father of lies and half truths. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me and continue in your unbelief which is one of you has proof and convicts me to sin. If I speak truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God belongs to him, hears the truth of God's words. For this reason, you do not hear them because you are not of God and you are not in fellowship with him. Now, if you love God with all your heart and with all your might, all your strength, you're in fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get to God is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And uh, there's no other way. There's no gimmicks. The only way is through Christ. And the, uh, God brings you to Christ. That, but see, you had to have, you had to love God. He draws you to Christ. If you haven't been drawn to Christ, then you need to pray and repent of your sins. You do not have the love of God in you. Well, how about all these people say that always lead to God? They speak in false. You know, their their fathers of the devil is untrue. That's you know, a lie. they they do not speak the truth. That's a lie. And the, right, it's a lie, and the truth is not in them. Mm -hmm. But see, you you had to. I've, I've been studying and see. If they don't have the love of God in them, they're not going to be drawn to uh, Christ. Because if you do not love God, you're not going to recognize Jesus. 
Jesus said, if you, if you recognize me, you recognize the Father. They did not recognize him. And they well, should have recognized people that him. recognize that there is a God? Their God could be a car, it could be no, a jury. No, I'm talking about they recognize that, you know, there is a supreme being, a God. Yeah, but what kind of God is it? It could be an mm -hmm. idol, a statue. No, I'm not talking about that. Uh, I'm talking about people that say there is a God, a supreme being, there's a God over, you know, the whole world. Mm -hmm. You know, and... According to Jewish uh, tradition and um, you know the law and the mm -hmm. prophets, mm -hmm. there's only one God, right? Uh, Jehovah, mm -hmm. Elohim, right? Uh, he's got you know many names, right? You know he said I am who I am. Um, the way to get to Him is through Jesus Christ, right? It is. So if you don't receive Jesus Christ. As your Lord and Savior, you don't have the Father either. No, you don't. That's what they need to know. Mm -hmm. that right, that's what I just told them. The only way to get to him is through Jesus Christ. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you're not uh, going to get to him. I was just reading that in First John, the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are antichrist. Mm-hmm. That means without Christ. Right, they they without him. They were out the Lord. And the reason and, uh, they're like that because of uh, false prophets. Right, it's false doctrine. And false uh, prophets. Men, uh, men will tell you anything. Right. Uh, what men will do will say that the Bible says so and so, so and so. Mm -hmm. But when you ask them, well, where's the scripture for that? They don't tell you because they they have made up and they have twisted the they have twisted the uh, word around and they not uh, speaking because truth. a lot of people are motivated motivational speakers right or got the the gift to gab mm -hmm. but there's no meat no no substance to what they're saying and a lot of people go out there and they just get ran them up. But th those are the ones that God is talking about. He knows their motives. Yeah. He can, he can see in their heart. what happens is it's affecting motives. a lot of people. And it's leading a lot of people to astray. Well, that's one of the main reasons why he has his teachers out There's many teaching. voices in right, this Right, many voices. But they have received the Holy Spirit and they don't quench the Holy Spirit as the Holy well, Spirit will lead them Jesus, right. Jesus um, that baptizes you with right. the Holy Spirit. Right. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Right, they don't. They don't have the Holy Spirit. So what So we, if you got Jesus, you got the Holy Spirit that can lead and guide you into all truth. But what what the Lord's, the Lord's people had to do, which is us, we had to continually pray for them. Well, because we had to continue to pray for them because a lot of their minds are in captivity. What well, Jesus Satan. was doing, if we're an example, if we, he if we to do act it. like Jesus, what Jesus did, he was teaching. Right, right. That's what you do. Continue to give the word, no matter how many times you had to uh, And this is what he's doing in that eighth chapter. He right. was telling them the same thing over and over. Over and over again. Point that he was saying, why don't... Why can't you even understand what I'm saying? Right, that's why he you. said that. Why do you misunderstand what and, I'm saying? And, uh, you still don't even but understand. But he, he said it's, it's because your spiritual ears are deaf and you are unable to hear the truth of my word. Um, he continued to tell them, but they were arguing with him. You know, they were uh, not listening. And that's what God said, you got to listen. Mm -hmm. And you got you to gotta do as I tell you to do. But they didn't want to. They were busy telling them about um, uh, Abraham was their father. Their spiritual. We had one spiritual father. And they said it was Abraham. Mm -hmm. But Abraham was a man. Well, uh, it's another uh, religion that says Abraham is their father too. Mm -hmm. And they don't have Jesus. Right, they don't have Jesus. They don't believe that. The way to God is through Jesus. Right, they don't. <laughs> and 
And that's uh, uh, that's why Jesus made a point of telling them that because they they had everything all mixed up. And he said in the 14th chapter of John, Jesus mm -hmm. said to, to him, I am the only way to God. And the real 14, truth. 14 what? Uh, 6. 14, the, 6. Right. Jesus said, I am the only way to God. And the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And he, he had told them this time over and over again. And that's why many people, you know, they praying and, and uh, begging. begging and doing a whole lot of things today, y'all, and they wondering why their, their prayers are not being uh, answered because they're the word of, of Jesus is not abiding Because you've got different religions, them. they'll pray all day long. Right. It Do kind we. of reminds me of uh, Elijah when he was, you know, up on that mountain. Right, they were cutting their and they and everything. They were praying to, and doing to idols, everything. yeah. And nothing happened. And, uh, and uh, 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 Isaiah, uh, he was saying, is your, is your God asleep? Maybe you should holler louder. Elijah. Elijah, he said, maybe uh, um, um, you should holler louder, you know. Because that's why when you say, sleep. just pray for him, you... You know, you can pray for people, but you got to teach them. Well, yeah, you teach them and you pray. You got to tell them the truth. Them and them. and mm -hmm. you got to go show them in the scripture where that's at because his word will not come back forth. Right. I, it's 100% correct. It will go into you and you can check this out yourself. We're not just trying to tell you something off the top of our head. We're telling you what God is saying. But he see, said, that's what uh, Jesus was doing. He was um, going through that word. We're telling them too because mm -hmm. we are his disciples. Right. <laughs> that, you know, we we are not above our master, but no, we those not. that are perfectly trained will be like their master. Right. We are like him. We're not above him, but we're like him. We're saying the same thing that he's saying. Right. That you know, what you say, you gotta get right. You gotta get right. You gotta get repent. Amen. Yeah, and so I appreciate everyone being here. And like I said, we had to be like-minded. You know, united with the Spirit and not going against the Spirit. Those who have received the Holy Spirit, that's the way we're supposed to mm -hmm. be. And we're supposed to be courteous and, and kind-hearted and you know, sympathetic toward others. Um, and be helpful mm -hmm. and humble in spirit. And when I find myself not humble in spirit, then I know I'm going. I'm not being like-minded with the spirit at all. Amen. Thank, thank you. So y'all have y'all have a nice thank blessed you, week, and uh, continue to be humble and do what is pleasing to God.